There we have our standard matrix representing the linear transformation of this rotation through an angle theta. We could then ask, well, how about other types of geometric or common geometric transformations such as reflections? And so what I mean by a reflection is if we take a vector in the plane or in R3 and we reflect it about, say, the x-axis or the y-axis, we could then consequently ask, well, what is the matrix A that encapsulates that action in a geometric sense? So let's explore that now. So we use that helpful theorem from linear algebra that says in order to find the standard matrix of a transformation, in this case a reflection, you just look at the images of that transformation uh, with respect to the vectors 1, 0, 0, 1. In other words, a standard basis vector. So I've here drawn those actions for two different reflections. On the left we have the x-axis reflection, on the right we have the y-axis. So in each case I have two subcases, right? I'm looking at the image of 1, 0, 0, 1 under this new action, this geometric reflection. So if I reflect about the x-axis, and I start with the vector 1, 0, for instance, well, if I reflect about the x-axis, that leaves the vector, as I've indicated, unchanged. So my image of that vector is still 1, 0. On the other hand, if I take the vector 0, 1, and reflect about the x-axis, right, I'm going to reflect down here and uh, end up with the vector 0, negative 1. So therefore, my matrix, again encapsulating this geometric reflection about an x-axis, is as follows. I have the image here written as a column vector of the vector 1, 0, and the image written again as a column vector of the vector 0, 1. Similarly, for the y-axis, it's kind of the same story. If I take the vector 1, 0, reflect about the y-axis, I end up with the resultant vector negative 1, 0. On the other hand, if I take the vector 0, 1, reflect about the y-axis, it remains unchanged. Consequently, I can then form my standard matrix for that linear transformation, a reflection about the y-axis, as follows. I take the images and just place them respectively as column vectors for A. So there we have the standard matrices for these linear transformations with respect to reflections for the x and y axes. So in concluding this section, let me then show you the culmination of where we can go with considering matrices as geometric transformations or representing transformations. We can take a sequence of geometric transformations, and I'll explain this with an example momentarily, and we can compactly, in fact, represent that sequence of geometric transformations via a single matrix. So for instance, if I took a vector in R2 and I want to rotate it and then reflect it and do a different rotation and so on and so forth, I can just take the representative matrices for those transformations, multiply them all together, and end up with a single matrix that once again compactly represents that sequence of geometric transformations. Let's see how that works with an example. So I've reminded you here on the board that our standard matrices for the uh, geometric transformations that we looked at before were as follows. There was rotation, reflection about the x-axis, reflection about the y-axis. So specifically when we plugged in the angle 90 degrees, just to see uh, again a simple example, we uh, arrived at that matrix on the far right. So let's here consider what it would mean to impose a sequence of geometric transformations. And the order, of course, of this sequence will matter. So let's string together all three of our, our types here of geometric transformations. So I'd like to begin the sequence, let's say. Given a vector in R2, we will first reflect about the x-axis, I'll say. Okay. Next, let's say we'll rotate 90 degrees. And then lastly, we'll reflect that vector about the y-axis. So what we're going to do then is take those representative matrices for those transformations and multiply them all together and then furnish a new matrix that compactly represents that sequence of transformations. What we'll do then is take the respective standard matrices for each of those linear transformations, multiply them together in a particular order, and the resultant matrix will be the matrix that represents that sequence of geometric transformations. Multiplication actually needs to be done right to left here, and if you're wondering why, it's analogous to if you're familiar with functions and function composition. Function composition, the operations happen right to left. Uh, these reflections, rotations, transformations are actually function composition. You can think of that 
in terms of matrix multiplication. So long story short, we're actually going to multiply the matrices right to left for that reason. So in other words, my first action starts with the right matrix. There's my reflection about the x-axis, then my rotation matrix, then my reflection subsequently about the, uh, the y-axis. So I've gone ahead and multiplied all those matrices together. You can check this and you get that final matrix. Let's test out this idea then that multiplication by this final matrix instantiates the prior sequence of linear transformations or geometric transformations. To begin, let's make this intuitive. So we'll start with a simple vector in the plane. Okay, so I'll draw this, our original vector in green as usual. So let's start with the vector, let's say, 0, 1. So we begin by a reflection about the x-axis. So if I reflect about the x-axis after step one in the sequence, I wind up here. Then I'm going to rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees, so that'll put me here along the x-axis at step two. And then lastly, if I reflect about the y-axis at step three, there's my final result. I end up with the vector negative one, zero. So that should agree our geometric intuition with this idea of multiplying the product, in other words, this matrix here, the product of all those standard uh, matrices for these transformations by this initial vector. Now our initial vector here in the picture was zero, one. So let's see if these things agree, hopefully. Um, when I take the dot product, then I get zero, negative one dotted here is negative one. One zero dotted with this vector is going to be zero. And sure enough, as we've seen here, the multiplication, in other words, the action of multiplying any vector in the plane, in particular zero, one, by this matrix is equivalent to performing this sequence of geometric transformations.